Hey, what's up guys? So hopefully you guys enjoyed the Thor Ragnarok review and I'll be posting more this week. So stay tuned. He wants to be in the video today. So I wanted to submit to the Film Riot one minute short film competition. And what you, what you needed to do for the film competition is basically submit a video that's one minute short and try and win. And if you win, you get some cool gear and stuff. You have to f use Filmstro as your way to get the music in there. So today we will be talking about how I shot the short film and I will show you the post-production process for the film. So hopefully I win, but I've seen other great films and a lot of great films have been submitted. Trust me, I've checked some of them out. Check out the short film. I will be tagging on the annotations around the video. So just check it out and hope hopefully you guys enjoy it. But today we will be talking about what was my process for that. Right, Jabba? Let me just put him down now. He just kept coming up to me and then right scratching the door and stuff. So if you hear him, just ignore him. I'm gonna show you the way I color corrected it, the way I edited it, and basically my thought process throughout the thing. So the first thing you wanna do is come up with the idea, right? So the way I did it was a little bit different because I scripted another short film that I wanted to shoot for this one minute competition. I even posted a casting call on Short Film Texas and other websites. Sadly, I had a little bit of actors applying for the casting call and then, well, I ended up scrapping that idea. So then I was home on Wednesday, November 8th, and then I was just watching all these uh, film essay videos. I really enjoy these film essay videos so I was watching a bunch of those they started talking about like being creative and then not taking yourself too seriously which then I started thinking and you know what I have been taking myself too seriously with some of my short films and feature films with the short film I had planned it was again real serious real dark with these film essays I started thinking you know what I should I should deliver more stylized things and not go for something so cinematic then I started thinking about the short film and I wanted to make it as stylistic as possible so then I started thinking, I want this to be fast, super fast paced, so fast cuts. And then I started thinking of several films. Number one, I started thinking of Shaun of the Dead. So then that kind of influenced my work a little bit. But the other thing I wanted to do is, you know, those how-to basic videos. I really enjoy those, they're fucking funny as shit. So then I wanted to implement that into a short film. So hopefully you get the style of it in the short film, like I said, go check it out. That was my thought process. Then I just wrote it down real quick. I didn't even use a Final Cut or Celtics. I just wrote it on my cell phone. Since there's no dialogue in it, it was mostly just putting down the actions and then pacing it in my head. So then I asked my brother to help me and then he's always down to help me. So thanks, Xavier. He helped me out in this short film. And then, you know, we started shooting. And I wanted to get some BTS video of the shoot and everything, but it didn't quite work out because it was just me and my brother. So then I was like, fuck it, there's no time. Let's just do it quick. So for shooting, I used two lenses. I had an 85 millimeter T1.5, a Sydney Rokina lens. My mom's apartment is really small. So that 85 millimeter was a no-go. So then I used the 50 millimeter 1.8, the Sony for the A6300. And I used that one for the shots where I had enough room. And the reason I wanted to use that is because it has a f-stop of 1.8. So a lot of light is available. I mostly worked with natural light. Obviously I try to balance most of the lights, but like I said, I wanted something real stylistic. So I try to avoid any dark areas areas in the film. Another thing I try to avoid is shooting and just white walls. So I would switch around my house kind of to make it look interesting. Like in the scene where he's like playing his video game or watching TV, the TV isn't facing him. The TV is facing the side, but obviously I had to trick the audience because if I faced him the natural way of him looking at the TV, he would have been on a white wall. After I got down the first shot, what I really hated is that I don't have a fluid head tripod. I struggled a little bit with getting a perfectly fluid movement. So then I tried my best. So then we proceeded to the next shot. And what I try to do with these next shots, since it was in the cabinet and you know, the refrigerator, I try to put a lot of lines in my frames. If, if you start noticing in a lot of these takes, there's lines leading you to the objects I want you to absorb. Like when he opens the pantry, there's lines of the cabinets pointing towards him. Same thing with the fridge. The fridge was a little bit different. I just lucked out on that one. When he opens the door and you see him facing the fridge, I, that was a lucky shot. I enjoyed how it looked and I decided to keep it. It's a real extreme, crazy, stylistic shot. And then other than that, everything else was leading lines and then good framing and then that was it. We got the shooting, we started shooting around six o'clock and we finished around eight. And the reason why we finished, it took us two hours to shoot was actually because I'm pretty sure we ate something bad and it gave all of us diarrhea. So we had to like take turns going to the restroom. So that's why it took us two hours. It could have taken us maybe an hour, but you know, when the poops calls, you gotta go. So anyways, we finished shooting it, then I got home. When I got home, I just started editing. Since I was a camera guy and the director, I knew the way I wanted to edit. So I didn't really have any extra footage. Everything you see was it. 
I didn't have any extra footage and I didn't have any other takes that I wasn't able to use. After that, like I said, I started implementing a lot of these jump cuts kind of things. Enough of me trying to explain it. We will hop over to the computer and I'll show you the way I did it. Wait, I also forgot to tell you the other lens I used. Not only did I use a Sony 50 millimeter F 1.8, I used this SLR Magic 23 millimeter F 1.7. It's not as sharp at 1.7. It's actually really soft, but I shot it at a f4. It's a pretty good lens. The only thing I used for the audio was the Rode Micro because since the camera was so close to the subject and items, it got all the sound effects that I wanted to get in camera. So that was good. All I did in post was, you know, work the music and stuff. But I, but I will show you how I worked all of that right now. So. This is my desktop. I don't use um, Apple because I think personally it's a piece of shit. But anyways, let me open up this project real quick. So anyways, let's go on with this uh, video real quick. Okay, so first of all, this is my first take. This is the first shot I got. So basically, this is S-Log3. This is how it looks. It looks dead, I know. I still don't like the new Premiere 2017, so I still have the Premiere 2015. And the reason I have this because it has everything, everything you could possibly ask for, it already has it. So why would I upgrade to the new version when the new version doesn't have everything. For the workspace I use, I use the color workspace. It gives me the little RGB parade right here. Oh. All right, so what I first end up doing for color correction is bringing up my level. So usually I fuck around with this, you know, this is too squished, the, the RGBs are too squished. So what I like to do is, you know, fix the levels. So I crush the blacks a little bit more and then I fuck with the RGB gamma. And this either makes it lighter or darker. So this is the original real quick. And then if I go back to the to the normal, you can see the changes in that. Same thing with the black. So this is normal. And then if I add apply the change, this is it. So one more time, this is the normal. This is normal and this is with the levels on. So that's what I do. Just, you know, crush the blacks and add more light or bring it down. It just depends. Well, it doesn't even depend on your shot. It depends on your RGBs. So if your RGBs are too low, you want to bring it up with the gamma over here, the RGB gamma. So that's what I fuck with. After that, you go to the, I, I don't like using the Lumetri just yet because you could add more color. I feel like you should add more color to your uh, S-Log3 footage. So then I use the three-way color corrector. And, um, you know, if you have some white balancing issues, you could fix it with this right here. Like I said, I'll try and zoom in. I don't want to. Okay, so then after that, all I do is bring up the master saturation, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. They'll be at 100, but you bring it up to 200. And that adds a lot of color. So just compare that. And you see the, and then when you come over here, you see that your reds went up, right? All right, this is when you go to your Lumetri. Okay, so this is your uh, basics right here. And like I said, I wanna, I always wanna have the red and the blue matching at around 80. And then the green, I always want it lower. So that's why I fuck with the tint. The tint is at 80.3, because if not, if I have it normal, it'll be like this and I feel like it looks too green. And S-Log footage tends to do that, look too green. So I always add a little bit of magenta tint to it. The temperature, I uh, like I said, I even this out. Because if you could tell, the red was overpowering the blue and it looks, your footage looks too red. And I had a good uh, white balance, but still you can, it just makes lighting. So in order to fix that, you gotta, you know, fix your levels. And then I add some highlights, you know, I bring up the highlights. I have 40, cause this is normal. So you wanna add some of those highlights and then same thing, whites. And then for the shadows, you wanna crush the shadows a bit. Cause if not, look how it looks. You wanna add some, sh some black into it. And then un you crush the blacks a little bit more. So I usually f go around negative 15 or negative 25 for blacks. And then for saturation, I bring it up to 150 again. This is how it looks without it. And then I like adding more color. So it looks colorful like this. After that, I, that's when I have my footage looking the way I want it to look. Okay, so now that I have this, that's when I, you know, put the Lumetri looks. Your other Lumetri LUT, basically. And now I added the Film Riot Film Pack. It's the Hateful Eight standard look. And I added that to that and I added it at a 50. And then that's how it looks normal, you know, after everything is balanced properly. Um, you probably see a little blue here, but um, I like to keep it like this. That way when you add LUTs, if they're too red, they'll, they'll balance it out. You don't want to go to 100 because then that's how it looks at 100. Not too pretty, right? And then uh, you don't want to do that. All right, so then you add uh, adding two LUTs, some kind of variation on it. 
I don't have this one anymore, but if you want me, I'll give you the file. I'll Gmail it to you. I'll give it to you on the do Google Docs and then you could have it. But basically I bought this uh, LUT pack with all the, you know, teal and orange. I like adding that a little bit because it, it it's my way of fixing that green tint on S, S Lock 3 for the Sony A6300. So basically this is it, you know, this is the color I like. And the way I usually like doing this, I kind of skipped a few steps. So the way I usually start is save all your files. We have about 48 uh, items and it's mostly just him. It's not even him getting the perfect reaction. It's me getting that uh, fluid motion because I don't have a tripod. So it was really difficult. Well, I usually, if I have separate audio, I like to sync it in post, but I didn't have any separate audio. So I just started editing. You know, I add the color first. I like starting with the color because that way I get the I get the feel of it. I, I don't like color correcting at the end. I, other people do that at the end, but I, I I don't. I like correcting it. So obviously you can see the reds are higher than the blue and green, but that's okay because I want it to look red. You know, if you don't want it to look that red, you just, you wouldn't use the, the brown aqua tint, you know? So then after I edited everything, all of this, like I said, I was editing as I um, shot, you know, I cut it to where the footage started and then I took the next shot. So you could see it. So this is how I started, put my ins and outs, drag the clip, added the color, and then I went to the next shot, which was this. So then, you know, I got the best shot and I ins and outs, dragged it here, and then same thing with the fridge shot. So it was just getting the best shots, you know, and adding them to that. Like you could see here, I really fucked up this uh, framing, but I I still like this, I still like this. So what I ended up doing is since I shot in 4K, which is, this is why I like shooting in 4K. You're able to fix it and then still use that image. So look at that. This is really cool creative, a cool creative uh, image. So basically this is at, so it's zoomed in 50%. I don't want to go too crazy into it, but you just start looking at it, you know, go, feeling the pace of it. After I got everything the way I wanted to look and I corrected it, and then obviously with these shots, these, I forgot to white balance. This is what I'm saying. White balance is the most important thing you could do because if your white balance is wrong, it's all wrong. This is a bad white balance. And the reason this happened is because I didn't take my time. You know, I just, I just kept shooting and I was like, oh, I'll just shoot this real quick because we had pizza. So we're like, let's eat, let's eat, let's eat. But basically uh, you don't want this. You don't want your RGB to look like that because if you did, you shot it wrong. So then, you know, you have to fix it with the, with this one, I added a fast color corrector and then you try and fix it somehow. And then after it looks pretty good, you know, you got your balanced RGBs. Then you go to your, you know, Lumetri, you add, you fix it with your Lumetri and then you add your LUTs again. And then that's it. And then sometimes I'll tweak, I'll tweak the LUTs, you know, if I don't like the color, if I don't like something of it, I'll start tweaking it. But I like this and then I just started editing it. I don't want to make this too in depth, but like I said, that's the way I color corrected. That's the way I color corrected and graded this footage. Uh, for audio, um, you know, I, I used, I went to Filmstro, you know, I didn't, I didn't get the one that goes inside Premiere because it needs the newest Premiere. Like I said, I don't want to get the newest Premiere because I don't like the newest Premiere. So with this one, I used three different files, you know, I don't want to use the same track for all of them. Had to look through a lot of these. So I like downloaded all of them. So in, in order to get my footage in here, I just exported my file and a really, really small compressed file. And then I just started doing the music. Like if you could tell here in my soundtrack volume, this is just the music for this little piece right here to where he's looking through the fridges. That's all I used this clip, this uh, song for. Because I didn't want to use one track because it didn't work out. And then after that, uh, let me just give you this, the intro of the song. I think, I think I don't have the other file. I don't have the other file, so I can't show you the other track that it was. Yeah, no, I didn't save it. But basically, I chose three different tracks. I turn off the power and momentum for most of these tracks. And I like this about Filmstro that you're able to customize that. Because if not, you know, you don't want a super heavy ass track on it. But that's my music tracks and these are some of the sound effects. That's a stomach. And then I believe this one was the... So I used this uh, reverse boom. This is a reverse boom. All of the song stuff I did in Filmstro. So these are my three songs. These are my three effects right here. This is the, another reverse whoosh. I labeled this a little bit better so you could see this. Uh, the reason these are nested files is because I, I thought I was gonna be able to add the stable uh, warp stabilizer, but it didn't work out. So I, I, I did. So I didn't end up using any warp stabilizers on these footage. That's why they're nested. That's when people say 4K is important. I say it is because it helps you crop in your image to get the perfect framing 
you like. David Fincher does that a lot. They, they did it in Mindhunter. I, I watched a little video I say about it. And then ever since uh, I think uh, Gone Girl came out, I've been using 4K just to crop my footage. And then basically everything was in camera audio. Nothing was too bad. I had to erase this file's foot uh, sound because I did the, some growling noise with my mouth. I believe that it was like me going. So obviously I cut that and then I got this. This file had really good, uh, the room ambience. So I added that to this track and then I believe this track and then that was it. And then I added this, you know, these two are the sound effects of the reverse boom effects. And these are the growling effects. But other than that, I kept the effects pretty simple. And what makes this, all of this work out is that it's all fast cuts, super fast cuts. Basically that was the gist of it. I don't want to go too in depth because you know, I would have to make like a super long tutorial of how to edit. But basically, let me just show you this clip and show you how it looks ungraded. So this is without the love packs. So if you look at the image, it looks pretty enough by itself. If you see this, this is a good corrected image. You, know, you see the RGBs, the real high. If anything, I believe I'm clipping some of the whites. I bring up the footage as wide as possible because I know my LUTs are gonna make it darker. So once I added the second LUT, you could tell my uh, white levels were going down. And when I added the third one, they went more down. So then there you have it. But that's what you want to do. You don't, you don't, most people, I've seen most people just do this. They just add a color to it and then a LUT. So that's how your footage looks with just an applied LUT. Other people just mess with the lumetry and they have this and then that doesn't work out. So what I used to do is just, you know, add the color, add a LUT and have the LUT at 100%. So then you get this it's still stylized, but if you look at the RGBs, they're real close to the shadows. You're clipping the, the white balance is off. All these things are off. So what do you want to do is fix all of that and fix your levels. And then your image starts looking prettier and nicer. As long as you get capture good audio, you get good audio. If you want to look at how to capture good audio, go look at my other video and you'll find out you will. If you edit more, you'll become a better shooter because you'll know what kind of footage you want to capture. And I got this tip from uh, one of the wedding gigs I worked at. And it's true, the more you edit, the better shooter you will become because you know what shots you will want. But basically that's the gist of it. Um, we'll go back to the actual video. So let's go back to the actual video. So after I was done, I showed it to my wife. She enjoyed it. I added the music using the film stroke. I don't want to use just one track because if I used one song track, it wouldn't work because you know, the scenes changed drastically and I wanted different emotions for each scene. So what I used is use three different film show tracks. After everything was done, after I added the music and after I exported it, and then after all, all of that was done, I exported it and I uploaded. So I did the whole short film in about six hours, you know. If I were to take, if I were to take the, all the potty breaks and all the breaks I had, it would have been like three hours really. I only really took three hours to think about the subject, to edit it and to shoot it. But like I said, a lot of breaks in between. So like I said, it was more like six or seven hours to finish this short. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about how I made the film. And if you like this, I will be doing another video of how I shot my feature film. That one's gonna be a little bit different because I will give you tips on how to shoot your first feature film. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to the other channel where I post my short films. Also, if you have a Roku channel, please download the Roku channel and watch all these videos and all my short films in that Roku channel. It's called Alex Serloff Films. But other than that, go like us on Facebook, go like my Alex Serloff Facebook page. And if you're a cool guy, just add me on Facebook.